Hello and welcome to Tarot Electric. I am Mary Shock. Today I have a very exciting episode to share with you all. This is a full recording of our last meeting of the Be More Tarot Club. And we talked all about the lovers. So that's your card of guidance for today. And you're going to get a lot of ideas and thoughts about what the lovers means. But I will just share with you that I hope that you're all finding space for love in your life and that you are choosing a life that you love. I think that's the guidance to take away from the lovers today. So I hope you enjoy this podcast episode and I want to thank Holy Underground for hosting Be More Tarot Club. I want to thank everyone who is there in person and I want to thank all of you for listening now. You can contact me, find my contact info on my website, maryshock.com, if you have thoughts or questions or if you want to be a guest on this podcast. You can find Tarot Electric on iTunes where you can subscribe, rate, and review. And you can also friend me on Instagram at Tarot Electric. So just let me know how you're feeling and thank you for listening. I will be reading tarot this coming Friday, that's July 7th, in Baltimore at the Creative Alliance for the Songs of 1967 Summer of Love 50th Anniversary Show with Fractal Cat, and a lot of my good friends are going to be there, so come out to this like hippy-dippy trippy show, and you can get a tarot reading and hang out with me. Um, oh, you can also join our Facebook group, Be More Tarot Club. That's B-M-O-R-E Tarot Club. And then you'll get all the info about the next Tarot Club meeting, zine making opportunities, and everything else tarot related. It's not just for folks in Baltimore, although it's got a lot of good Baltimore centric information for you. So many blessings and please enjoy the show. Amazing. Well, we'll just like test it and make sure it's like working now. So does anyone want to like say hi? Hello. Hi. I think it'll work. Okay. So I've got a lot of tarot stuff to talk about, but I do like to go around and do circle of intros and say hi. So, if everyone feels good, that's what we'll start with, and I'll begin. I'm Mary Shock. Welcome to Tarot Club. Um, I go by she, her, and I'm a tarot lover and a tarot enthusiast, and my relationship with tarot recently has been pretty good. Um, I got to kind of trade readings with Victor recently, and we went all in on these tarot readings and it was really really fun um to get read by someone else and to get that like meaningful info so i'm really feeling that and i've gotten to read for a lot of people recently so i just feel really inspired um i haven't been doing a ton of reading like for myself but that feels fine for me i don't really feel like i need it I'm just working with this big reading that I got, and I'm enjoying reading for others. Cool. Linda, would you like to hi. say hi? Hi, I'm Linda. Um, say she, her. Uh, I've been coming to most of the meetings. I'm really excited about today's meeting because Lovers is a card that I always have a lot of questions about, um, how, it really, how other people understand it and how other people read it, because um, it seems like one of those cards that just it means something different to everybody. And um, yeah, I've been pulling cards daily this past month, just to, and it's really been helping me a lot. I've been I've been going through a pretty dark time lately. There's been a death in the family that I kind of don't want to go into right now. But um, yeah, pulling the cards is kind of helping me, you know. 
you know, make, make, I, I don't want to say make sense out of it, but, you know, get something positive out of the, um, out of the grieving experience. And um, that's pretty much where I am right now. Yeah. You guys are literally the first people I've talked to all day, so. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's, a, it's been a good day. <laughs> uh, my name is Nick. Uh, I use he, him. Uh, I've been kind of exploring tarot in various forms for like almost three years now, but I've only done readings for like select close friends, so I use it primarily for myself and really when the cards seem to call, uh, when a moment in my life really needs clarification. But I, I'm really excited to finally kind of discuss this with people because uh, having a community that's interested in the same thing and all these arcane subjects uh, is just very exciting. Uh, so, uh, I'm also, like, interested in alchemy. I use I Ching every once in a while when that calls me, too. So, uh, yeah, there's so much good stuff to be drawn from the field, and, uh, excited to be here. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. Welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm William. I go by he, him. Uh, Tarot. I feel like I've been a be beginner when it comes to reading for like the last couple years. <laughs> I've been like at the same level. And I took a break for a while because I moved and I've been working a lot and um, kind of changing jobs, going on a lot of job interviews. So I've just been slowly introducing it again. And it's especially this week, I mean, it's been helping me a lot. But um, yeah, that's why I'm not. Cool. I'm Oftar. And uh, I also use he, him pronouns. And um, lately my relationship with tarot has been not as uh, intense as it maybe had in the previous few months. I've been doing a lot more numerology stuff. Uh, I've been doing more readings and um, a lot more opportunities in that realm have been opening up. So I've been kind of focusing more on honing those skills. But the great thing about that, though, is that it kind of is just sort of feeding into the tarot whenever I do use it. So I had this routine where I was doing some readings every day, or just like pulling some cards, and I was getting a lot of the same cards over and over again. I'm like, maybe I don't need to be doing this every day, so <laughs> I'll revisit this in like a couple days or in like a week. And it's been working out, though. I feel like I've definitely been able to um, touch base with it again when I need it, and feel like it's a support system that's there, but it's also trying to tell me, like, stop asking the same questions, <laughs> you're getting the same answer, so, um, yeah, that's where I'm at. Uh, my name is Joseph, um, I also use he, him, but I'm open to whatever, um, and my experience with tarot is... I've had my cards read a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's fun to be on the receiving end of tarot. Um, but I haven't really, I've never read anyone else's cards. And um, I actually never had my own deck until I bought Mary's deck. Um, Which you should buy. And <laughs> I have been periodically, um, not every day, sometimes not even every week, but just been pulling a card every now and then if I had a question. Um, or was feeling some kind of way about something and wanted a little bit of clarification. And I'm finding that I'm having issues with um, interpreting what a card means for me in, in, a, in a particular moment because as I was talking about earlier, I just bought a house and right the day before we closed on the house, I pulled the death card and then my question was about should I go forward with this house? And like, uh, I interpreted it as a bad thing. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, well, but it's like death of this current situation, like death of like the current house, probably. But like, I don't know, I wasn't sure like what that meant for me. And so um, I'm just trying to like figure out how to interpret what it is. I'm trying to figure out how to interpret the answers to the questions that Fine. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I'm DNA. Um, no pronouns or, or time. Uh, I live upstairs. Um, excited to 
be here at the very beginning of the, the, the meetup. This is my first time being here at the beginning. Um, last time was awesome. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not, you know, um, super um, high level or expert at tarot, but I, I really enjoy it. Um, I've had mostly just friends uh, give me tarot readings over the last uh, five or six years, and usually at really long intervals. And I, I really like that. Um, I, I kind of like looking at uh, long periods of times um, and kind of seeking out the, the readings at pivotal moments. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I really like that. It makes me think kind of in the long term. Um, and like Joseph, um, the first tarot deck ever acquired is Mary's, which I acquired recently. So. Recently, I've been pulling a few cards here and there, just a single card, you know, um, and that, that's also been really interesting. It's kind of a different way to experience it, um, you know, not getting a, several cards together, but just a single one, you know, for the day or for the week or for the calendar period. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for being here. This is my favorite thing to do. Um, I want to talk all about the lovers, but I also just want to talk about Tarot Club a little bit. And I want to tell Linda, I think that there's a turmeric, mugwort, Damiana tea up there if you want oh. some. Sorry to point. But just oh, yeah. if, if you want to try It's very yeah, yeah, earthy. Too. So I won't be offended if you don't like oh, it I'll or if you just want to try a little bit because it's not sweet. It's very, very earthy. Oh, it's turmeric, so it's, it's good for like circulation and mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, um, and your happiness oh, and well, we everything so else that turmeric <laughs> is good for. All right, so I've had a bunch of, like, ideas about Tarot Club and, like, the future of Tarot Club and how to keep it being something that's really, I don't know, just awesome and fun. And one thing that I really want to do is create a Be More Tarot Club zine. And I just think that would be so cool. And I'm not exactly sure how it would look. And maybe we can talk about it a little. Or maybe we'll just figure it out as we go. So I don't know if it becomes, here comes a friend. Like, a one whole zine just for the lovers. Hello. Welcome. Hi, Safra. How are you? I'm good. How are you all guys doing? Great. Good. Welcome. Oh, that's nice. We are, like, literally just getting started. Um, and. We all kind of said hi. Do you want to say hi? Hi, I'm Safra. I just got off the mic. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Yeah, take your time and make yourself at home. Okay, so I'm talking about Tarot Club Zine. So I don't know if it becomes one little zine that's like all about the lovers, or if it's a zine that encompasses maybe like three cards at a time, or maybe like seven cards at a time, or what? You know, but what I thought we could do today to just get it started is I have some paper and we've got some art supplies and maybe Marcus. folks could just doodle, draw, write things about the lovers, write whatever you're inspired to and then we'll just see what we get out of it and how I put that together later as a cohesive scene. So. So, I don't know, any thoughts or ideas about Be More Tarot Club, the zine? Would every meetup be a different zine? That's what I don't know. I mean, I kind of feel like I would put... Do you think it should be like a cumulative? Like, each meeting you keep adding more things to the zine? That's mm -hmm. kind of what I'm thinking. Oh, like in a so quarterly thing? So a single yeah. edition, kind of? Maybe like yeah, like year. in each quarter, like, you know, like the fall edition and the summer edition. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So you get like a couple Season, months like worth. Yeah. And like, then every every month we could add something new to it and then right. we publish what we got at the end of it. Mm -hmm. I like that. Seasonal. Seasonal. Yeah. I like that too. Or like by solstice. Ooh, how, yes. By solstice. How free form do you envision it as being? Uh, well, that's good good question. question. <laughs> yeah, this is my first time meeting <laughs> Good question. Um, I mean, I would really love it to be a communal, so not, and that's why I'm bringing it to you guys, so not something that just I'm putting the whole thing together. So I think that there might be some, like, 
formal structure that I might put in in terms of my ideas about the card, but then I would love to have it be like all kinds of art and sketches and doodles and poems that people would write or whatever people are inspired to do. So in that way, I would like it to be like super fluid. And I don't think it has to be, everything has to be created here in this space, you know? So folks can be making their own stuff at home or even looking through their own work and submitting things that they think are appropriate, you know? And then putting it all together. And someone even recommended to me, a uh, Khadija, who I just did, um, a tarot for healing at the North Avenue Knowledge Exchange. I was like bouncing this idea around with her, and she was like, "You should look into Press Press." I don't know if oh, anyone yeah. knows um, about that Baltimore-based small press. So, Khadija even suggested we have a Be More Tarot Club like field trip there. <laughs> so, so I feel like it can be a pretty fluid thing, and coming together based on what everyone wants to put in. So in that way, it would probably be really eclectic and fluid. And yeah, I was definitely thinking like it would be something we would take a couple months to make, like one, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, um, we make it if you did like qu quarterly, then yeah. then they would, it would cover three cards. I love time. that, right? And that's a nice number. Mm -hmm. It's good, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah. I feel like we're all pretty much on the same page with that, and. I brought some paper. No one has to do this now if they don't want to. But what I was thinking, if you're so inclined to, to doodle and put some stuff down for the zine, maybe fold the page in half and just work on one side. And then later, um, I probably will like cut it so that they can be put into a master copy because they won't, so they won't all be folded like this. But if you work on, you could just work on one side or you could fill both sides, but don't do the back, right? And just put whatever stuff you're inspired to. Lover stuff, if you want to, if you're inspired to throw in a different card in there, go ahead and put it. Maybe you put your name at the bottom of both pages for me and number them like one and two or more if you do more just so I can keep them consistent when I do have to cut them down the middle and oh if you want to put like your Instagram handle or anything else you know if you are like doing something and you want folks to be able to come and, and chat with you about it like feel free right does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah I love it okay um so maybe I'll pass some paper around <laughs> and y'all can just grab a page if you want a page or a couple pages. I have these which might be nice to lean on if folks need books to lean on and I've got a bunch of weird crayons, pencils, pencil sharpener and stuff in here. We've got this marker set or um, art set. So there's lots of stuff. Maybe we need a there little There are watercolors in here too. Watercolors? <laughs> you know, Anybody like, really wants yeah. to break out their, hey, Mary. their impressionistic <laughs> set. Do you, do you want to have the discussion before we get into this? Oh, or? that'd be cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that would be good. good. That would be good. Get a little bit more watch. inspired I and love it. into the, the realm of that. Yeah. yeah, I think so. That's a good idea. I mean, I don't mind if anyone wants to, like, do if they feel thing. inspired yeah. and they want to take notes while we're talking or want to do stuff, but... Um, but if you just want to hold on and wait till we're getting started, that's cool too. I kind of wanted to give everyone the stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And try and get a little bit of light. <laughs> Is that something? <laughs> All right, we'll try for more light later if and when we need it. Okay, I think that's what's not good for the auto. It starts to get darker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right, it's casting it's like, it's like shadows. Casting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just casting on the light. Well, sometimes it's fun to draw in the dark anyway because 
you never know what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can't really judge yourself while you're drawing. Yeah, that's what I just said. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blind contour. Well, they make you do blind contour in drawing class. And then you look at it and you're like, ugh, what? Or maybe you're oh, like, no. oh, cool. Yeah, no. But when you're a child and yeah, you're a perfectionist, it. it's not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. All right. So thank you for, like, sharing all your ideas and thoughts with me about that. I'm honestly excited about this. I think it could be really, really cool. And I think that, I just think it could be like such a beautiful thing, you know? And we'll probably maybe be able to sell them for like a really low price that would like help print them, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, if they get super popular and we raise extra money maybe we could put it into like a field trip or a tarot club party or something really fun and magical you know what I mean so yeah. I just think that it would be fun to create this and I feel like folks in Baltimore and like outside of Baltimore I just think this could be a really cool thing okay so as we talk about the lovers I also brought in a bunch of like fresh mugwort and we're drinking it in the tea so I'll just kind of pass them around, and if you want to take, like, a stock or more, go for it. Because mugwort, I've been working with it a lot. I'm super into it, and maybe we can all talk about it. Um, but it's a, an herb that connects you with your intuition and your dreams and the moon. Um, so I think it would be a fun thing to get into while we're having this magical discussion. Now, I feel like we can talk about the lovers. Finally. So where did you find this mug? Where did you buy it? I harvested this uh -huh. in Harper's Ferry. Oh, cool. When I went to West Virginia. Nice. Yeah. So it's still pretty alive. Mm -hmm. I harvested it um, Wednesday, Thursday morning. Take it home with you. Put it under your pillow to sleep with. Dry it, etc. I used a dry mugwort that I bought from Rose Mountain Herbal Company in the tea. Oh, yeah. How do you dry it? Just hang it with just let it hang. hang it with it. Yeah. In a dark, dry place. Like a cabinet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Or, hot tip, your car <laughs> is the perfect oh. <laughs> dehumidifier. Yes. If you do a paper bag with herbs in the car... While it's so hot out now, you it'll dry your herbs really, really well and quickly. Getting dreamy while you're driving, though, sounds good. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Don't, 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 like, give it a whiff. Yeah. Keep it in a nice, like, a big Maybe paper like bag, but, like, roll that paper bag. Because yeah. okay. you don't want the don't sun to get in. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want okay. to <laughs> swerve off the road. Mugwort-induced car accidents. It can't be mistaken for any other dried herb, I don't think. No. That could get you in trouble in the car. Fair. No. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, but like I made Cops a are botanists. No, they're <laughs> really not. <laughs> I made a ton of mugwort wands to to burn and they're all drying in my car right now in a paper bag. So I'll have those eventually. Okay. Cool. So the lovers. Maybe we can go around in a circle again and kind of share our thoughts and feelings about the lovers. And if you have a tarot deck and you want to share the lovers from your deck and, and pass it around, um, does everyone feel good about that? Yeah. Okay, and I want to go last, if that's okay. okay. All right. All right, well, I, I, just have, I just brought my red away. I didn't bring anything fancy this time, so you probably all have... You're all familiar with this one. It's the, uh, the we'll classic one. Around. And, um, yeah, I'll pass it If you feel like there it. There you go. Um, but it, like I said earlier, it's, I'm really interested to hear what everybody else thinks about this card because it's something that I always had a hard time with. Uh, to me, when it comes up, I always see it as um, when there's something outside of you that you're compelled, that's you have no idea why, you know, like something that means more to you than your own life and you have no, you, you don't know what's causing this and that's to me what it always signified that energy of what's what's compelling you to 
love or to care about something more than, and that the, the, the confusion as to why it is that this thing matters so much. And that's what it's always meant to me. When it's been reversed, it's always been like, un, you know, like there, that, that has been um, at odds with what you believe in and what, you, um, what you've always thought about yourself. So it's been kind of a tricky card, but, um, you know, I never really took it at face value. That's that's how I always saw it. I love that. It is a tricky card. And that's an unconventional way of looking at it, but I kind of love it. I think it's cool because it's also ruled by Gemini and like Gemini are the tricksters. Yes. So I Yes. I definitely feel how like it might look like, oh, when you see it pop up, it's like, oh, like you're in love. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's like, hey, but maybe it's like the opposite. Because there's also the other side of, like, things burning and dying. Yeah, exactly. And it's like there's there's that angel with the fiery hair that's, like, controlling, like, almost like a puppet master mm -hmm. over their heads. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I said it just feels like, and also, you know, I'm sure we all have been there, you know, it just feels like we're completely not, when we are in love, we just don't know what we're doing. We have yeah. absolutely no, we have no concept of what's mm -hmm. right or wrong or what we're even, what, what's going on. So, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a complete lack of control, but... In not always a bad way. Mm -hmm. Just like in the like, just like unknown. Mm -hmm. kind of way. It's funny that you were saying that the angel is like such a controlling force in there because even though he's very central and he seems to have his hands out, there seems to be a kind of like my impression looking at it earlier uh, was that he's like saying you're on your own in a way. And I saw Adam and Eve, their hands are kind of, oh, they're not Adam and Eve, but the male and the female figures, their hands are kind of up, almost like, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> it's well, like I feel like it does reflect Adam and Eve, because it does have the apples the and apple the trees. And the snake. Absolutely. Yeah, but I, I... There is something. Yeah. No, there totally is Adam and Eve symbolism, but I also don't want to, like, fall into, like, straight up, like, this is all this is, yeah. Christian Yeah, because we, we have the snake on the tree, definitely. and the apples, and, oh yeah, definitely. But they're kind of, you know, they're finally left to their own devices, kick, being kicked out of Eden, and that's when, you know, the relationship actually starts. Oh. Um, so it's like the challenge, like, I think of it, I have a little bit face value kind of interpretation of it, that it is, it is about social relationships. It's about having to meet each other in your, in your full kind of, like, horrible humanness. Your, yeah, in your full physical way, like, yeah. you have to kind of. A computer or your phone. It's like, that's cool. <laughs> They're not hiding behind a yeah. big leaf. Or yeah, they got nothing. They got nothing hiding there. Which is true, right? yeah. I feel like it's also like Hello. pure like vulnerability as well, like mm -hmm. allowing yourself to kind of be there and be present mm -hmm. with the person you love and kind of combating with all of the just the, the different sides that come with being in love. Because sometimes you can be completely blinded and not know that there's something like something you know, burning down or something else going on that you're not like aware of because you're so focused on being in love. Mm -hmm. I might be a little dumbfounded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is this thing inside me? It's so confusing. Oh, I was gonna say I don't really have um, any connection to the lovers. That's a card that I almost never get. So I was I mean, this is all very interesting because I'm like, oh okay. So now I have some kind of sense of something when I do get it because I really don't ever get that. I do sometimes, and it's like, I don't know if I have the same interpretation, but also if you look at that, that card, it's very different from the, the Rider Waite like, imagery. It looks more like a marriage, like they're, they're being united as one. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of interpret it. two heads. It's yeah. kind of more of an interpretation of um, like meeting an opposite or um, Accepting and elevating a polarity within yourself or with another person and and creating a new stage of consciousness a new um, Level of consciousness through relationship and not through an individual experience as far as um, Those possibilities go, um, but yeah, it does have this sort of um, I don't know. I think the word lovers is something that turns me off in general. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a it's such a like a lovers. It's you know, creepy. Like that. Yeah. But it is. It can be a creepy word, and it this doesn't creep me out when I see it. But I definitely don't look at it as being like one of those cards that um, makes me feel a certain way, like some of the others do. It doesn't like give me this feeling of like, oh, this is all about love, because it doesn't to me. 
have to do so much with love as much as it has to do with like commitment. Yeah, and that card especially. This is heavy. the boss. Yeah, yeah, that's the and like it's like the hermit basically presiding over you or the magician presiding over you and like uh base you know, putting you in this contract with one another and so it definitely has in that deck more of like institutionalized you know mm -hmm. implications. Mm -hmm. This definitely know. has like that institutionalized way like of having male body and the female body yeah. and then it's life and death and like the mm -hmm. basic concept of duality and then maybe like the angel in the back kind of being like the divine or like source energy like the universe and like yeah. Yeah. And in that way that it's institutional it also speaks to how it's a social mm -hmm. part, right? Yeah. Um yeah. It's very normative, isn't it, though? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Especially it is. In, it is very in most yeah. traditional decks. In, yeah, yeah. In tradition, some, there have been plenty that have come yeah, out. Yeah, some cool new decks I've seen have, like, really, like, queered the lovers in a way that can be so beautiful yeah. and exciting. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely becoming less and less, like, the only image that you see when you're looking out there at the lover's card, but it is very normative yeah, at yeah. its core, yeah. yeah. And in this deck, I don't know the name of this deck. Tarot del Fuego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fuego. Mm -hmm. the, the female um, has two heads. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting to me. I've never seen that before. Um, yeah, what, how do you... I mean, you said you never really get the lovers. Yeah, I never get that one. Um, so when I, I actually didn't know what it looked like when uh -huh. I was looking for it. So when I pulled it, I was like, oh, wow. And then it, <laughs> so I don't really like... Uh, I guess I should be really examining them a little bit more, even the ones yeah. I don't get. Like, how do you think we would like you could examine that, like the two heads? Uh, there also two like, Gemini, peaks yeah. in her dress yeah. as well, with like two houses on it. Yeah. Oh. And, I mean, in the original, in the original Marseille's card, yeah. it's got two women in it as well, but like the relationship's oh. completely ambiguous. So that's what it's referencing, oh. or you can tell it that. I bet that whole oh, deck, but I'd have to look at Tarot del Fuego again. But yeah. that card is definitely inspired by the Tarot de Marseille. So I'll pass that around. Because well, it wasn't until Waits Rider, until the Rider Waits Smith deck came out, and um, maybe yeah, some decks in six, that six, era six, as well at the yeah, same time came with that same breakaway from this traditional way of looking at the lovers. But this is how the lovers was traditionally drawn this angel overhead, and then these three characters, and their relationship is really ambiguous. So tell me what you guys think. It's really, it's up for debate, you know? I feel like the lovers is also indicating this, um, an image to help the like production of life, to like help procreating. Um, I feel like this is kind of like signifying like, you need to like it, it. It takes two people to create another set, like another life, mm -hmm. and um, and with and with the couples being in love, like having like source energy giving you, you know, what love is to be like you can create like like the perfect being kind of like kind of image. So this is supposed to be like a very like definite kind of. Um, picture of like what love is so I feel like that's probably what what they're kind of getting out of because this looks like a child the person in the middle the person in the middle of the Marseille definitely looks youthful, youthful yeah. kind of like a page quality page. and the pages yeah. are um, yeah and sometimes they're very androgynous mm -hmm. and um, and and in some decks they're portrayed as females and related to the queen. Um, so I definitely think the middle figure of the lovers is like at the most androgynous. Like I don't see it as clearly like male or female. I don't know, I think it's really interesting and definitely wow. useful. Yeah. There seems to be a thing about making a decision Thank you. And yes. when I'm looking at, especially the two together. Terra del Fuego and the Marseille. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the del Fuego is this um, male looking figure, and then the feet, the yeah. woman with the two heads. 
the one with the red hair it looks like she has like water or white wine, I don't know. And then the brunette has a nice ombre. She's got a nice ombre. She's like a <laughs> brunette to red ombre. <laughs> but she has what looks like either blood or red wine. So it's like at first you look at it and you think it's like you know, like good or evil, but it also might just be like the different sides of a person having to accept all the different sides of something. Like when you go in to commit to something, you have to accept all of it, yeah, not just yeah, certain just parts the of it. Pretty parts, like mm -hmm. the, yeah. I believe, the sickness, the mother. Yeah, being yeah, yeah. Oh, everything. Totally. Oh, we got. I'm sorry, I got thrown off in the circle. But Joseph, do you have any thoughts about the lovers? No pressure. I'm just kind of uh, taking it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel? Any ideas? Is this your card? No. This no, is. That one's mine. mine. What is this card again? From? The, it's the terrestrial tarot. That's cool. <laughs> this, that's actually the least interesting. Of, I, I would say that's the least interesting in the major arcana in there. This is a trippy card yeah. for the lovers called Synergy. Synergy. And then this like Two deer mirrored... merging into a kind of strange amalgam of biological matter, <laughs> but with a figure in it. So these card, this deck is, I think it's pretty interesting because it's got so many weird abstract images in it, yeah. built out of organic um, collages, yeah. essentially. It looks and so like it... A, an eye from, from afar. It kind of looks like a bit eye. Huh. Like it's got an eye. Like it's a single creature like that's like. Is an eye. Yeah. And it walks like that. Yeah. <laughs> like a spider. I, and it also is giving me, I mean, this is like a snake kind of a thing at the top, right? Which is reminding me of the Thoth deck at the mm -hmm. bottom has the snake and the egg, yeah. which is like, I mean, I'm sure that's... Transformation. Yeah. 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 And it's like the origin story of the, of the Egyptian mythology, right? And Hatun. So I don't know. That's like a lot. When I look at this one, I always think that it's like kind of it's about merging. Like it's not like it almost discounts a lot of the social aspects, and it's very much like the the loss of self in relationship. That you're creating a whole new entity, a whole like a di the dynamic, the pattern, the energy is. Uh, oh, this is totally yeah, lady parts up here. If you look at the king, there's so many parts. Yeah, absolutely. This is all of it. Oh my god, this is like vagina rama. Showing the priestess afterwards. <laughs> Wow, they are everywhere on this deck. Dude, that's card. That's here. a cool card. Yeah, that's a cool card. Yeah, so looking at that card, it looks like the, um, the two deer merging. Um, you know, they're uh, by merging, they're like a new awareness, like a like a combined consciousness or something. But, yeah, definitely. Uh, so yeah, that would be very. But there's also, um, if you look at it again, there's almost like. A, a figure in that space. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can, can you see her? Yeah. Or yeah, I, it looks kind of female, but it's almost like this. So there's also like a shackle, like the dangers of a relationship, mm -hmm. what gets crushed away when you give yourself to somebody else. What do you have to hide? Yeah. Or sacrifice. Or sacrifice. Uh huh. Well, it's interesting. There's actually, okay, so in the, um, in the, the Sikh tradition, when they talk about marriage, it's always this. Uh, discussion about not being a, necessarily about a contract or a commitment. It's about the process of two two individuals or two souls in one and two separate bodies attempting to merge into one soul and two bodies into one consciousness through the experience of each other or through their experience of themselves through the other because it's always like a mirror of yourself. So. In that card, that's kind of what it's showing me. It's just like you're yes. coming together, attempting to merge, but you still have your two separate bodies there. But mm -hmm. there's your your the mind intent. and heart are one. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So I have a bunch of lover cards to share with y'all. Um, I would I would share um, a couple of thoughts about it. Yeah. What are you well. thinking? Um, well. Uh, First off, I, so the very, the very first stair reading I ever had, uh, I didn't have this card, but it was with the Tabo de Marseille. Uh -huh. uh, and in this deck, uh, so it's in French, and it says l'amoureux, uh, which doesn't mean the lovers. It means the one who is in love. Uh, so in like all these other decks where all the lovers, lovers, oh, it's like two different entities, you know, uh, being in some sort of 
involvement or have, having some sort of relationship. And this one is just like the um, kind of insinuates different things potentially or connotates different things because maybe the relationship is unidirectional or it's not necessarily a thing where it's going both ways. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I, always, I don't always think of the, the car of the lovers as, um, you know, like, okay, this is a relationship between two human beings, but maybe like one of them could be the person reading the card or whatever, depending on who you are in your situation or how you're reading it. But maybe the other figure could be a personification of like an issue or like a thing that you love or like, you know, it could go so many ways. Um, but yeah, I, I do like the this version a bit, the Tell Marseille, because it's very ambiguous. Um, but I, I've never drawn this card for myself. Um, I've seen people draw it and um, I guess look at it in a very binary way where like, oh, this means like this love relationship and um, you know, like this means that I have to make a passionate decision or blah, 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 or that kind of stuff. Um, but so I've, uh, I've often kind of thought about it in that way, even though I've never encountered it. Um, but if I have to think about it today, uh, I've been with my partner for five years. So if, you know, um, if I had to draw this card, I, I I feel like I would kind of look at it uh, more as in a long-term thing, you know, like we're like long-term partners. Um, and, uh, you know, we always look at the, the lovers, like you mentioned Adam and Eve, like that's the snapshot that we remember, you know, like, but we don't see them getting old or like going through all this other stuff. Um, so I kind of think of that like, okay, well that's one moment, but then there's a whole other picture that we're Thing. So, um, yeah, thinking of it now, I'm thinking, oh yeah, maybe it means like um, we're gonna get old together, or you know, what, whatever, um, depending on when you are in time. Yeah, you've got a little bit like that too. There aren't many. I, I don't think there's any other major arcana that has too many other figures in it, like especially multiple mm -hmm. human figures. Oh, right. The do. world, the world's got a bunch well, of animals hanging out there in one head. Well, the, the tower's <laughs> got people falling off it. The devil's got. Devil's Got the two yeah, devils, yeah. The, and also death, death has got all the figures being trampled. So, yeah, actually, most of the major kind of have more than have figures because we've got the uh, the hero fountain, which you did last week, has three. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. these two people. No, you're totally right. Yeah, but it's not. I do think it's significant that the lovers has so many people in it, and oh, the you, devil. Right, the devil does too. But if you're looking at the tarot as this like journey and map, and you start at zero and then go numerically, so five, the hierophant is the first one where we have extra figures. So that's the first one to me, and that signifies the introduction of society into the map and what's going on. Um, and even in the hierophant, it's like the hierophant's the main figure, and you have these two other figures, but you only see them from behind. And then the lovers really opens it up. So it does say to me that this is a very social card and that this is the beginning of exploring society in tarot. And I do see it, I, I do see that as being important. And it is kind of like a mirror to the devil because there's a very similar setup in terms of visually how it looks, especially in the, the rider wave. You're seeing like the triangle, mm -hmm. Zafra, mm -hmm. yeah, the pyramid. And just like having the devil is like up top, like up the top. two people. Exactly. Like, right. And this is like, you know, Wait when he designed the Major Arcana was looking at it from this Christian perspective. So did exactly make the lovers to be Adam and Eve. There's no question about it. He says it in the pictorial key, which I didn't bring today, but we could look it up if we wanted to see. But he says that they're Adam and Eve and then very much makes the devil this opposite so we could like pull out that card but it's like even um the woman's tail in the devil has these like grapes on it and the woman in there is eve and the lovers behind her she mm -hmm. has fruit mm -hmm. so it's like there are these very similar um Motif. visual clues and so, I mean, what does that tell? And there are a lot of different ways to look at it also because the devil is card number 15, 
So if you're going to add 1 and 5, that's a 6. And the lovers is card number 6 in the major arcana. So maybe there are some connections there to be made. Um, and what does that really say about the lovers if the other half of it is in some way speaking to the devil? And maybe that is speaking to the way in that this kind of experience of love can be um, something that is really beautiful and harmonious. I see all those things in the lovers, but maybe we, when it's pulling into this place of being all-consuming, maybe then we're like pulling into devil territory of being tempting and materialistic and, um, and an overwhelming fire rather than something that is uplifting and uniting um, in like divinity as like a mirror for our spiritual selves maybe the devil keeps it on this like material plane, plane. yeah, yeah. Um, so I don't know there's just there's so much there so like let's I don't know, you know let's I keep really, talking about I really it love seeing these two cards together yeah. yeah can we pass both of them around do you yeah, mind that's sure. cool I did see an image in um, Michael M. Hughes' class. He displays this image of an early painting that um, Pamela Coleman Smith did where she had this drawing of a sphinx, this painting of a lady sphinx whose tail was a bundle of grapes, just like the woman in the devil card too. So that was, I, I mean, that was a way of, of Michael M. Hughes putting out the idea that Pamela Coleman Smith actually put a lot of her own artwork and ideas into the work, um, and it wasn't all maybe completely dictated by weight. So that's a whole other topic, but I always think that's interesting now whenever I see that tale with the grapes. It's funny, though, how at the same time, the, the devil and the lover's cards, like, there, there's so much that's actually, like, that doesn't distinguish them very much. Like the fact that there's fire in both of them on the male side, okay. the fact that there's fruit in both of them on the on female, female side. side and, exactly. And and in the devil card, they look more peaceful in a way. They look really chilled out. <laughs> Whereas mm -hmm. in, in the lover's card, they're, they they seem more unsure of themselves. Well, yeah, because uh, the, devil, the devil card, that way I interpret that, because I have no problem with the devil card at all, but mm -hmm. um, it's because there's no, you don't have any free will. It's like, okay, it's not up to me. It's, uh, you know, it's not my fault. I abdicate responsibility for this, whereas is the lovers, it's like, oh my god, it's totally on me, it's mm -hmm. totally on me. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's reflected very much in their faces. Yeah, I also think that there's like this sort of juxtaposition, or, or that in a sense they are opposites in a lot of ways because of the lovers being more of like the acceptance of uh, standards and, uh, you know, societal norms and and structure and form, whereas the devil's like the rejection of all things that are, you know, restricting to the free will or the the more animalistic nature within us. It's like here's the commitment and here is the destruction of commitment, basically. And the rejection of it, maybe not destruction. Hmm. These two parts. <laughs> My deck are so crazy looking. Like, especially the devil. The devil is essentially just emptiness. What else could it well, be? Like, go just you know, standing on some balls. <laughs> you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the other thing with with the lovers and the rider weight is that um, the tree that's like on fire behind the male figure is supposed to be a, a reference to the tree of life um, in the Kabbalah uh, imagery of that. Um, okay, so oh, I have cool. a couple of cards to pass around too. My so image cool. for the lovers is very sexy. I mean, it's very much like what you first think of when you might think of the word lovers. Because I do, I mean, when I hear the word lovers, it's also kind of a cringy word for me, too. Oh, Tarot del Fuego is cool. It's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it is nuts. 
I like their lovers a lot, though. Yeah, I like the lovers. The devil one, though, did you notice the female's a pig? I see that. Yeah. <laughs> I do see that. I like any deck that's inspired by the Marseille, yeah. just because it's different. You yeah. know? about that deck in particular, like, in the lovers, there's the house on the one head, mm-hmm. and in the devil, you see that there's, like, half a house there. I see that. Mm. It's been split, yeah, and too. They have these mountain peaks on the woman's dress in the yeah. lovers, and the, the house that's split is also part of this mountain peak that's split that's in the really devil. Awesome. There's definitely something that you're setting up in the lovers that's being, like, broken down in right. the devil, right? Yeah, right. These are cool cards. I like how it's fun. This is the devil card, but it's called the unknown. Oh, nice. Oh. Mm. It is a, that's very sweet. Oh, yeah. I remember what the Thoth one looks like now. It is it's crazy dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try They're not even, like, trying to hide it, too. She's, like, talking about it. She's like, oh, this is, this is phallic. It's meant to be phallic. Yeah. <laughs> and the goat. Capricorn. Yeah. Yeah. Like it almost seems like the devil represents sex more than the lovers does, at least in that deck. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Yeah, but I think they both speak to like a passionate experience in terms of the lovers being like, for me at least, a real passionate and definitely like sexual experience. In terms of if I was like asking tons of questions or t- tons of questions, but if I was asking questions about, you know, a potential partner or a partner, and I was l- really wanting to find like true love, you know, the lovers wouldn't be my favorite card to come up. Okay. It would show me that there was spark and fire there, but I would also want to see something maybe like the sun. Or, or some, I would want to see some other stuff to indicate mm-hmm. the longevity mm-hmm. and, um, uh, and, and the partnership there. I mean, the lovers could, would definitely, it wouldn't be a bad sign for me, but it would definitely speak more to the passionate realm than the, like, um, long-term mm-hmm. commitment partnership. But that's just my interpretation in my lover's card in the summer tarot deck, I mean, it's two people boning, right? It's very normative. Mm-hmm. Um, in my next tarot deck, I'd actually love to make it a little less um, binary, but I do, I like it, you know? Um, and they're kind of, you know, they're crowned in these garlands of flowers, and that's, and they're pink, so it's very passionate and like gross but they're rolling around in these ruins you know so to me I do think about the lovers as choice and that's just become my interpretation of it which doesn't have to be this one's cool <laughs> this, this is a cool it, deck it's a really cool deck yeah you know that deck I find that like the thing that you see first is not what it wants to be. Mm-hmm. I saw a seagull on that. I see I see parrots on Bird-like the side. Bird-like as well, yeah. It's kind of like an always throw a mirroring back at you. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one is more kind of like about general like darkness in your soul rather than kind of, it doesn't parallel the synergy card in, in any particular way. It's not relationship. As right. Much. Yeah. yeah. It's this definitely a, a personal experience. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, what the lovers has really become has been choice. And a lot of that is when I started reading with the Marseille tarot deck. Um, uh, And I see the lovers as this crossroads that gives you the chance to maybe follow one road that might be safe and easy or what you've been doing. And I see that as kind of a keeping in line with the hierophant, the five that came before. So like staying with tradition or staying the path that you're on. Or you can choose, and this is the road the lovers really wants you to choose, is this new unknown road. And that's taking your individuality back from being absorbed in the group and in the tradition that the Hierophant teaches us. But then at the end of the Hierophant, I feel like we're really encouraged to explore our individual path and passion and life. And that's what I feel like the six gives us as the next step. 
So I feel like the lovers really likes us to make a strong choice and choose our own path rather than what society or what the group or choose the risky thing. Um, I see it as very, as bringing harmony and beauty and love into our life. And I see it as making choices that bring passion into our life, making choices that bring love into our life, choosing the path that like turns us on, I like to say, because it should just be creating this fire in your life. And I think it's very, very individual. Um, so when I see the lovers, I definitely look at it in terms of this big soul pack kind of a place and less like about relationships, but sometimes it'll come up when I'm asking about relationships and then I know that it's there to honor that and to talk about it. Recently, I've been pulling the lovers a lot actually, which has been, um, really interesting because I'm definitely kind of always on this path of like following my own um, journey. But I do think that it's been speaking to me more about relationships recently. So that's been really interesting and just something that I've been like, I don't know, exploring in my heart. But in my lovers, I just see them as kind of rolling around in like the ruins of the structures of the Hierophant that they kind of tore down and then you can just like be passionate and full of love on a new road. So that's mine. And then I'm just going to pass all of these around. Uh, the mother piece is a round one. It's kind of crazy. Definitely speaks to the Marseille because it has these options. Um, the angel is from the Robert M. Place angel deck and it's Prince of Lovers Thelio. I mean, I think it's Cupid. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then in the herbal medicine tarot deck, or medicine woman tarot deck, the lovers is called ecstasy, and it's really beautiful. And then this is the Miss Cleo tarot deck, and it's like <laughs> oh, Egyptian inspired. Miss Cleo, Cleo tarot yeah. deck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, I'll pass it. Oh, I'll pass the nice. whole thing around. Someone gave it to me. It's all Egyptian oh, that's inspired. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Cleo. If you can't have them yet, Miss Cleo, and you don't deserve yet my own way around. Remember that? Why is that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, for me, the lovers is about choice. That's all. That's just been how it has spoken to me personally, and I don't see that as something that everyone has to adopt for their own tarot journey, but that is what it means to me. And that is because in the Marseille deck, it's this person in the middle. They have these two options, and you don't know if it's like there's this kind of androgynous young person in the middle and then this like young maiden on one side with like flowers in her hair and then there's this like older looking woman on this other side and then there are all these hands and you don't really know whose hands are what or like where they're going and um and sometimes people think that, that relationship is like a mother not wanting her daughter to run away with the central figure um, or maybe the central figure is having to choose between this young woman and this older person, and maybe they're like supposed to be falling in love with this young woman, but maybe they're actually in love with this older person, and it's just, I don't know, it's really, really interesting. And then there's the angel up above. So I also just want to throw it out there and ask everybody if they feel like there are any minor arcana cards that kind of remind them of the lovers oh. or speak to the lovers? God, yes. How yeah. do you feel about it? Okay, to me, and I'm so glad you asked that question because, you know, I didn't quite know how to bring it up, but the true lover's card, if you ask me, is the Two of Cups. Mm -hmm. And when that comes up, it's like, yeah, that is the real lover's card That's in love. the traditional yeah. sense of what we think, or what most people think this is, is like, you know, that's kind of maybe the, the hidden thing, but yeah, when you get the Two of Cups, that's that's what it means. It means a romance, or it means a partnership, it means relationship. Um, that's really, so the Two of Cups is is the lover's card, I think. Yeah, I would agree completely, because yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not sort of clouded in ambiguity, it's like straightforward, it's like, these are two cups, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, the emotions, and you're sharing with each other. These cups are pouring into one another, and it's cancer, so it's all about you know mm -hmm. love and connection. Right. 
Yeah, I would agree with you. And I think that Wait even wrote in the pictorial key that he saw the two of cups as as the lovers in the minor arcana. So I completely agree. And if I were to get the lovers and the two of cups in the spread, then I would really be thinking. I'd be like, what's going on here? What relationship is happening? And it looks good, is what I would be thinking. Mm -hmm. Any other minor arcana cards? What about the ten of cups? I was going to say the three of swords. Oh, oh well, that's, but, that's which takes hard. it a very yeah. different direction. Uh -huh. But yeah. the the repetition of three, there are three figures, and it seems like it could be a kind of tempestuous relationship between those three people as well. So that's just like there are other cards. There's also, I guess, the uh, uh, ten of cups. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Is that yeah. What you just said. Well, I think the the, the whole um, the whole suit of cups, really, in one regard, or not the deals with affairs of the heart, or right, love and relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and I think all the cards have something to do with that, but um, mm -hmm. so yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I see that. I see all the cups as dealing with love. So yeah. if I got the lovers and any kind of cups in a spread, I would definitely be thinking mm -hmm. about love and relationships and seeing what's going on. And, oh, the three of swords is so interesting to think and it's about a heart. that. It's, and it's, it's a heart. It's a yeah. heart. Yeah. yeah, it's a heart. Yeah, yeah. But again, it's a stormy background. It feels like it's about to be like just torn to shreds. Yeah. Um, and it's very much about choice as well, it feels, because it's it's like you're pierced with the, the gravity of the decision, whatever that may be, the gravity of each of these different relationships and how yeah. they're, they're pooling. Yeah, and like, but just like, because it's like all about like the thoughts and the mind and maybe like being indecisive and then having your heart being pulled. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Cupid's arrow probably hurts when it hits. Yeah, indeed. Even though he's got does. terrible aim, and, <laughs> right? He's like, where is he? Where's he shooting? But uh, love, yeah, the pain of love is, I think, inherent to maybe even the Rider Waite one's got you know, there's fire in the one tree. There's it doesn't feel all right. That figure is a little ominous in some ways as well. So yeah, yes, I see all of that. That's the Angel Tarot deck by Robert M. Place, who is a tarot, um, definitely a tarot historian. Here, you can look at the whole thing if you want. It's really interesting, and all the angels are definitely, like, real, like, or real, with, in quotation marks, biblical angels. Yeah, I just thought the imagery was interesting with yeah. the roses that he's walking on, these giant roses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a cat. Yeah, cat. He's also blindfolded. Yeah. He's blindfolded. Yeah. Uh, with the, the bow and arrow. Like a warrior. And he's walking yeah. on roses. Yeah. 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 Oh my god, yeah. yeah. Like he yeah. old. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Smee like shows that he doesn't really know what he's doing. Yeah. Love is pain. Not yeah. like pain. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. It's already yeah. emerging. Uh -huh. Right, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Not going anywhere. Love is blind. Right. 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 Like every, like... Nothing is just like clean and perfect. Everything is going to have like a little bit of pain. It's yeah. always going to be a little bit of blind leading the blind. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. There's the Greek myth about um, Eros, Cupid, and Psyche. Who, uh, if anyone's familiar, it's like such an amazing myth, and and uh, it's definitely there in tarot in a lot of different ways. This myth is like. Yeah. Um, referenced but but at one point in the myth like Cupid gets is Cupid tied up or is Psyche tied up I forget but there's this there's this boundness and it's about the union it's about like the separation of these two lovers and then they like come back together in the end and there's also this journey into the underworld mm -hmm. piece of it and there's this piece where one of them I honestly forget which but one of them Cupid's is not bound. doing anything I think, you might, kind of, I think Aphrodite's got him like locked up. She's like, Psyche, go do this, go do that, and then, right. you, can, then you can have his heart. Yeah. Um, so he's probably, I, I think he's bound up. Or he's in a coma. She puts him into a into a deep sleep. And, then, and, she's like, and makes Psyche be. run through all these tests and challenges mm -hmm. to, to like get her lover. Yeah, yeah. So like the trials of love there and, and, and Cupid it's, being blindfolded and bound is definitely... And it's interesting how the goddess of love is proving the obstacle uh -huh. to that, whereas, like, she's calling upon 
all the forces that help her in the story are these natural forces. They're like, there's help from an eagle, and there's help from a bunch of ants mm. to like a ch- retrieve whatever Aphrodite, I can't remember, it's like some gold, oh, not a golden so bow, but something like that. And then like to go down into the underworld, she has somebody else like kind of go across her. Hermes for helps. Her. Hermes I know helps, Hermes yeah. involved in the story. Yeah. Well, that's because it was her kid, you know, she just wanted to make sure that, you know, he was... <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's not her son. Yeah. 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 Mom. <laughs> Typical mother. Yeah. Possessive. Yeah, but I mean, if we can just look at love as this, like, kind of unruly child who is, like, easily bound and needs a lot of, like, fighting for, maybe, I think we get a little closer to... There are um, a couple other minor cards that remind me of the ones that are not cups, and I saw the Four of Wands... The three of pentacles, um, the five of pentacles, and the fool. Because like they've all, they how, all include. How two. the five of pentacles? I, I mean, I could totally see oh. the three, but how, how would the five be love? Probably like being being in the state suffering of together. of suffering together. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think yeah. even in the pictorial key, Wayne yeah. writes about that being about lovers. I think that's like a traditional idea about that card, which is kind of wild. Yeah, that's very cool. And it's just like, like how you two are gonna obtain to be, still be together even though, like they look like they have two different, two different uh, levels of like their discomfort. Like one has like a cane and one's just like kind of like walking on its own. So it's like, even though they're both kind of messed up at the moment with their own separate things, but they're still together and like trying to like support each other even though they're both like, you know, mm-hmm. both pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. And I thought um, the four of wands kind of being like the action, kind of like the, the end and the aftermath of kind of yeah. like, like we got married, like we're celebrating, like we, you know, got through all of this crap together and now we're a castle. Yeah. <laughs> a castle. Yeah. yeah. And now we're all fiery and happy and then yeah. we're gonna celebrate and share. And then the fool kind of just with like I saw like the, the like the guy, the person and then like the dog. Like that being like True love. Uh, true love. Yeah. 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 That, that, that is the yeah. most like innocent like ah, like if I got like the fool and the lovers together I'd be like I'm lying, I'm in love, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I'm just gonna just jump into this and Yeah. Perfect. Okay, this is perfect. Yeah. And then I would whenever I get the fool, like I always kind of think of also like this is just something new. This is just something new that I'm just discovering and getting into. So if I kind of like when I see this also when I see this, I'm just like, you know, if I just kind of walk in with this like open and great perspective, like it should be like I should, you know, when I, if I fall off the cliff, it can't be too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I might fall into something great. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you remind me too that it, um, the eight of wands also has in the pictorial key written that they are like Cupid's arrows. Hmm. The eight of wands yes. in the rider weight is kind of a weird card. Yeah, because yeah. it doesn't even there's have no any figures on, on it. Yeah. Is it just all the cards? It's just like, all the all arrows. The wand, like, yeah, that's right. Figures, yeah, arrows yeah. are both looking for a place to land. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. sometimes if I see that and I'm talking to someone about love and relationships, or if I see that card and then I see a lot of other cards that speak to me about love, then I'd be looking at like what's happening here mm-hmm. in terms of love. Oh my gosh. I feel like um, I feel like we really touched on a lot of truth in the lover's card and into the deep variety of applications of this card because it is so changeable. It really depends on what other cards are around it, what you're asking about, and what your intuition's saying. Because it's just, it's so much, you know? But I hope that this has helped spark some new ideas or illuminate some things. Wait, Wait imagines it as this union, um, the Christian mystic idea of like a, of a union on this earth being 
a mirror for your mystical union with so in this way it's the union of the male and the female and if we can have this within ourselves and within our soul unifying those pieces of ourself spiritually then it that is like how we can enter re-enter back into source into like union with the divine is through uniting with our own male and female inner self and the way to do that is to have a union here on earth that's like my what I remember my interpretation of what I learned about the idea of that like mystical marriage and the union but but that's all there so in some ways even though the card traditionally has this very like binary take it's also pretty powerful to think about uniting male and female and if it's like within ourselves it's kind of to me takes it to this whole other level um, yeah, some decks, um, depending on the deck, it seems that it either highlights a, like a monogamous um, like view of the, the lovers and like the Terra and the Terra del Fuego. Yeah. Uh, seem like they might be a bit more ambiguous and like there could be like a polyamory thing going on True. or some sort of triangle. Um, so that, that's interesting to think about uh, because then. You know, that card could become, um, it, it's not necessarily like, okay, it's a, a, a by, or, you know, going in two directions, uh, kind of normal relationship. It could be like, oh, well, there's a dilemma, or some, some mm -hmm. you know, like, or like an illicit relationship, or, you know, like viewed as something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think some traditional meanings to it are, especially with the Tarot de Marseille in those earlier decks, are adultery, you know, because yeah, they yeah. see that in the card. But maybe now we could also think of it as being poly, oh, yeah. or opening yeah, like, up oh, in this, this way like, that's great. cool, yeah. yeah. Like, I like that a lot. Any thoughts about the number six off -time? Yeah, actually, many. <laughs> hey, like uh, well, I mean, it touches with, in the card numerology, and this this card in particular, or this number six, are very much in the same vein. I mean, it, uh, six is rep representative of love and beauty. That's like one of the key elements that the number six embodies. But it's also represents the arc line or the or the halo uh, and the pituitary and, and third eye point. So. If you think about it being an intuition thing that you were talking about before with making a decision or here's a crossroads, what do I do? What do I trust? What do I know? Am I going in the right direction? The same thing goes with if you're entering into a marriage, like how do you know that that's the right decision? You have to just blindly trust your intuition and say that you're leading the way that you need to go no matter what. And so that that's really tied into that. It also represents the community and so it's a more social uh, quality, but also still in it, this idea of the company of the holy or having a spiritual community that you connect with. And that's, if you look at it from a traditional marriage standpoint, that was what it was intended to be, is that you gather the community together to have this union of these two people and the communities behind them to help them get through all of the stuff. Okay. Because they're not expected to be smooth sailing the whole time. It's like the way you make it through is to have the community to support you doing something. Um, the number six also uh, represents a balance too. It's like a, a sort of justice card, or a justice number, in that they want everything to be fair. The same thing goes with the relationship. It needs to be fair, otherwise it's out, it can't be equal. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely is how I read it when it comes up, is more in that vein than the, the more traditional sense. Right. Um, because, I mean, I have a, my, my soul number is a six. My challenge number is a six. I have, like, a lot of stuff related to this number. Um, but it's also how I communicate. So whenever I see it, I'm like, all right, this is me just needing to get in touch with 
these qualities within myself, make sure that my environment and my space is lovely and beautiful and inspires me. And that's, that's really what the six is, is all about. Creating a home with another or, you know, with yourself. But that union of the, the masculine and feminine within the self, too, is a lot about wholeness and completion mm -hmm. and, that, and that balance. Yeah. I love all of that. So the arc line and the halo, um, the same thing. I remember I mean, from yeah. my reading oh, yeah, with yeah, yeah. you, mm -hmm. is like the space. Right. So you want us to it's from it's from ear tip to ear tip yeah. across the forehead, and like when you see old paintings of saintly people or holy people, and you can see their arc lines, just because the arc line carries with it and has all of your karmic. Uh, stuff written on it so it's it holds on to that information throughout your lifetime so that you can slowly clear it away and the more you clear it away the brighter it gets the easier it is to see and so the idea is those who have these more enlightened thoughts and more enlightened lives have the capacity to have a brighter arc line to be seen a little bit easier um, but it has a really powerful quality of projection as well as protection so it kind of Let's you read and know the field so you can adapt accordingly, but also know when you need to separate yourself and remove yourself from the environment um, when it's working well. And women have a second arc line. Men only have one. Yeah. Um, and that goes from nipple to nipple across the heart center. So it, it has an added level of uh, intuition and, and ability to project and understand what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling it. I'm yeah. feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> by, by nature, women tend to be more heart-centered yeah. and a little more uh, open to mm -hmm. to anyone and everyone if, if they're allowing themselves to be. And as a result, that added barrier of protection enables them to continue to be that way without okay. closing off and, and being shut down by pain. I love that. Yeah. Also, if you become a mother and you breastfeed with an infant, it kind of connects you to that. There are lines. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. I thought that was really interesting that you brought that up and it's connected there because um, in the tarot, like, we wrote about how the rainbow in the ten of Cups was a reflection of the angel that's in the traditional Marseille lovers. Mm. So, so whenever you see that kind of arc in the Rider Waite, it's like a symbol of the arc of a divine presence mm. and like a loving divine presence. So Wait saw that in the angel in the lover's card, in the traditional Marseille, and also in the lover's card that we created, and then put it there intentionally in the Ten of Cups to make the connection with mm -hmm. the Ten of Cups and the lovers. There weren't, there weren't any angels, though. There were two children. But the, but the, the arc. The rainbow. The the arc, arc, arc the rainbow. The arc. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It. So anytime you see yeah. that kind of yeah. arc symbol in... In the tarot, I always think about the lovers, and I think about the Ten of Cups, and I think about um, that kind of energy. Mm -hmm. And it's there on a couple different cards. There's another interesting thing about the arc line too. Tell me. Okay, so <laughs> in in relationship to the the idea of of lovers, is that when two people um, have sex with one another, they make an imprint on each other. And that stays there for, for men it's for apparently seven years, and for women it, it stays there forever. <laughs> um, but there's, there, for both, it's, there are methods of clearing them faster, and it has to do with self-evaluation, with self-recognition, and just sort of burning out karma when it comes to having a spiritual practice that enables you to do that. There's even a meditation in Kundalini Yoga called clearing the arc line and like washing your arc line with energy it's pretty cool that's very cool yeah so <laughs> you made this face of like <laughs> freaking out yeah <laughs> but here this is like that's the thing is it's like if you think about it from just a very objective standpoint it, 
every person that you've known that way has made an imprint on yeah, you. Yeah, but there's it's stuff like, I don't want to carry. No, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That's why it's a little challenging to say that. Like, I don't love telling people that because it's like, you know, it doesn't mean that you're stuck with it forever, but it also means that it's something to think about as an objective to clear out of yourself, uh-huh. you know, to actively remove this person if you don't want that their energy sticking around, you know. I see so, that. Yeah. You know, it's really vital information because then you can start to think about, like, who are we actually sharing our energy with? Absolutely. You know? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're, you know, as we said, like, leaving an imprint on us as much as we're living, leaving an imprint on them. Right. And have to, like, kind of let us, yeah. allow us to be more considerate of, like, because that's a very, like, what's the word? Special, you know, energy that we're admitting to or we're giving to someone mm-hmm. else, you know, and then yeah. we'll, like if we don't know this person, we're taking their energy and like how much of that is like affecting our lives, like you know, every day. And, Absolutely. Like, it's that. So. Yeah, I just have a. I think I guess I I stumble with that a little because it's I don't want it to come across as like uh, a a judgment of somebody's sexual promiscuity I don't think that you right. should be told what to do or how to live your life but I think it's important to think about these things and also that especially I, I mean I'm not a, a biological female I'm not a woman and don't identify as one so I don't have that same sensitivity and when you get into the realm of the difference between the male and the female and how men will sleep with whatever because it doesn't affect them as much. It doesn't have the, as deep of a, a capacity to in certain... biologically. It's it's simple, not, yeah, simple right. as that. So it's it's easier for us to detach than it is for, for a woman basically because you have that added arc line and it's stronger and you need to be able to use it to protect yourself as well as, as feel like you can be a presence that's not interrupted by the psyche of another human right. being, you know. Cool. Um, uh, the last thing I'll say about the lovers, too, is that um, I definitely do make connections with the lovers and the devil, but for me, also, the way I read tarot is connecting 6 and 16. Mm-hmm. So I see the lovers as also being very much connected to the tower, which totally makes sense to me, especially when you think about the passion that's involved in both the cards and the, like, phallic erupting kind of energy that the tower (laughs) brings up. So I totally see them as being connected. And the through line for both of those for me is, like, passion and spark of this fiery energy. And in the the lovers. Okay. Because the tower is 16 in the major arcana, and the lovers is 6. And then whenever I get a six in the minor arcana, I'm thinking about those two cards. Mm. So, like, the six of cups, six of wands, all of that for me, I'm just looking at the passion. I'm looking at the spark of creative energy. Um, So, yeah. I I definitely see them. It wasn't, like, in the Toth deck, the um, six of cups is... Pleasure. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It's Scorpio in the sun. It's like Sun and Scorpio or something. Like that. See, that's very sexy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And Six of Cups in um, right away. That's the children. Right? It's the children playing. <laughs> yeah. It's just oh, well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Some potential outcomes there. <laughs> yeah. Here it is. Yeah. You know, they're things child like innocence. Uh huh. <laughs> not. Not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, does anyone have any final thoughts, questions, ideas about the lovers or anything tarot related that you might just want to bring to the group or ask or anything? How's everybody feeling? Pretty good. Okay, cool. Yeah. But I guess, like, one last thing. Yeah. I should have said this from the beginning, but... Like looking at them, um, the Rider Waite card just has like an overall concept, like an overall depiction of it. Just kind of like the the creation of the physical manifestation of of like the divine feminine and the divine masculine, like those energies being put into these 
two separate bodies, but a, like trying it to be seen as unified, as kind of one entity that we all have within ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I like that as an interpretation for the lovers. Also, it speaks to me when I don't want to fully like identify as either. Mm-hmm. Then I'm just like, oh, is there this middle ground that I can like? <laughs> live in and feel pretty good sometimes that feels amazing because most of the time I feel totally fine and good and right as identifying as as female and as a woman but sometimes I feel like really really challenged by it. No, a thousand percent. A thousand percent. And I just like and then because at first I was just like why is this card the Gemini card? I'm like whatever. Like now like this is all makes sense. Mm -hmm. (laughs) How it is a Gemini card and I and as being Gemini, Gemini Sun, like I can see how much this reflects like the sun's part of me and how I yeah. I have like what, like the energy that I'm getting from the sun that I am expressing outwardly. This like dual nature, yeah. yeah. Being on both sides all the time, trying to find a middle ground, but it's not really possible. Yeah. But it's kind of out there. Well, you know, and I, I had told Mary about this, but I'm like in the very infantile stages of creating a, like a Kundalini Yoga tarot deck and like <laughs> I'm sharing it with you all now oh, and yeah, then there's like a podcast in a much larger community no, so nobody steal my idea yeah, no, yeah. copyright it copyright <laughs> no, but it, and the idea for the, the six was polarity that would be the, the card because of its you know there's there's so much tendency to view polarity as like one good one bad one, one light one dark one up one down but in the grand scheme of things, they are they're equal. That one cannot exist without the other. In fact, you can't observe the other without knowing the other as well. So, and as opposed to focusing on one side of a polarity and nurturing it and trying to make it dominate the other, accepting both as part of the whole and then elevating that energy to create something greater. And that's, I mean, especially when it comes to male and female, that's the most basic human polarity that we can relate to because okay. you know we are maybe assigned a gender at birth, and then you live that way your life, and then you discover that maybe I don't feel the same way about it as other people do. I express it differently than I'm expected to. And you get this pushback sometimes, and you're like, well, why? This is just me expressing myself. But it enables you to go within and reinforce, no, these are all just who I am, and I can be a feminine male or I can be a masculine female and it doesn't make me less human in any way. In fact, it makes me more because I'm expressing all sides of what it is to be human, which is both. We are not clearly, we're not made from just male parts or female parts. It doesn't work that way, Um, even just biologically. But energetically, that's like what, that's what yoga in general is intended to do. It's like, let's unify and complete the human being as a full entity and say if I'm expressing too much masculine energy I need to work on my feminine side or vice versa so it's it's all about everything in balance and moderation basically cool and that definitely speaks to me the idea of like the lovers and the devil being Mm -hmm. connected too because you can see how if you don't honor the space for uniting polarity or right if Mm -hmm. you just put all of your energy on on one side of that scale then then that would be a devil energy Mm -hmm. to me at least totally here comes a friend (laughs) oh so late hello hello Hello. i'm so late welcome (laughs) Well, yeah, you're totally welcome. Come on in. It's amazing. I mean, I definitely feel like we're in the stages of wrapping up. I'm open to any questions that are coming up. So, yeah, it's 8.30. So, first of all, if anyone just needs to go, you can just totally go. And we'll be wrapping up. Because this is the time where I normally wrap up. Are we okay to chat a little bit more? Sure. Okay. Um... Sometimes at the end of Tarot Club, we break off into individual pairs and do like little readings. But last 
month, what we did was actually all just pulled one card for ourselves and kind of shared it in the circle. And that was kind of fun. So okay. I don't know how everyone's feeling and if you want to sure. pull, do that. Is my, is my two of cups still over there? Oh, oh, yes, it is. Yeah. Here you are. Cool. Um, uh, we kind of going on um, what you were saying right before Jordana came in, um, uh, do you feel like the lovers have a kind of a connection or affinity with the uh, either the Justice or the Temperance card where there's this, you know, this balance that you yeah. think? Yeah. I was thinking about that. Uh, I'm just curious what yeah. people's thoughts are on that. Yeah, wherever there's like, because funny in in the in the class like the um, tempers is actually called art, and it's mm -hmm. it's sort of the completion of the lovers. It's basically their their polarity has been met, but they've merged and they've kind of s s taken on qualities of each other. So it still shows the two individual figures, but they've taken on each other's skin colors and and like different clothes, and then like the lion. Uh, for Leo and like the the eagle for Scorpio have changed colors to the others. This uh, is injustice. No, in in, 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 in art, in art, art which is temperance. Temper. Okay, thank but you. But then justice is, is very straightforward, like the balance of the two. But still, it's sort of like whenever there's two sides meeting like that, and they're like there's a very balanced weight on each side of the card. I definitely start to think of of justice or, or in my depth of justice. But um, yeah. Yeah, I did see that for sure. It's funny that you like say that because that really helps me. Mary knows that I've been like working on uh, decks and this general like relationship, like long term like thing that I'm working on. And it's funny because I've been getting the lovers cards, and as things have been progressing, um, just recently I've been getting temperance and justice mm -hmm. often. So that kind of makes sense that it's almost like a morphing because we have been um, in a better place. But yeah, for a while I was getting a pattern of the lovers, and then lately, in the past couple of days, days it's been continuing into um, justice and temperance. So maybe that could be a maturation. Mm. Yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that just makes sense because, like, I and you know, I love that I've been walking through one relationship with like a pattern because I have been seeing the correlation, like, mm. of the cards. I'm late, and I won't keep you guys too long, but with the lovers, what scares me a lot of the times, it talks about like the lovers is like a decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking about Yeah, I'm sure that was like a big, you know, the crux of the conversation. I don't like that. It makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and how does, like, what is that? Because it, it always makes me afraid of, like, there's someone else, and you have to choose in another relationship. Like, does that, is that what you guys have been talking about? I think because... We kind of agreed upon is that whatever if, if there is a decision that you need to make you have to make that decision from like what your intuition is telling you what your heart is telling you yeah. mm -hmm. you know and because if you're like overthinking it and then how we, we reflected it to like the devil you're overthinking it you're, it's all in your head and it's kind of you're going to kind of go towards like that devil the, the opposite end of of, of, like an, of like the other path where you can be like spiraling upwards. Right, because right. I mean, Gemini is an air sign, it's very mental, so it's like if you over mentalize something, yeah. you kind of lose the heart of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think that's all that I. Can I borrow a deck? Yeah, of course. I, I mean, I definitely see the lovers. See, I would say like um, choice more than decision yeah. mm. but that's just my keyword and even though they seem similar to me they're like a little bit different in this way that's kind of important maybe in terms of like rather there's a decision you have to make or like here's a choice you mm -hmm. can make yeah. I don't know it's like do you want to try this one I feel like you might like it if you want to see another one let me know I was just like the choice is all your options before you and your decision yeah. is the one thing that you, you chose. Right. Okay. But it's not, yeah. Okay. And I think decision in the way, is past tense, a choice. A choice is yeah. open. Yeah, decision is past choice. 
like mm. the choice decision. Right, the mm. decision is the choice that you make. Yep. Um, and also with the the lovers card, I did personally have just like a Gemini come into my life, so it could also be super literal too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Can be for sure. Completely. All right. And also, I mean, like, yeah. what, what do you, how do you think that kind of reflects on to Gemini's? <laughs> like, what is that, like, what is it that like they are for like kind of representing as like the lovers? Um, mm. That could be. What? Uh, yeah, I mean, really good question. Um, do you have a feeling as a Gemini? Or is it easier to see it from the outside? Like, I guess I can I can say like being able to exist in in like both the masculine and feminine, like being like being mutable. It's like like these things. It's, it's it comes easy to us. Yeah. You know? um, mm -hmm. And then for it to be the lovers, like it's easy for us to kind of act upon like our intuition from our heart space like it's because like it's also like the child so it's still like we're very innocent and we always want to go into like just like what we like yeah you know so i feel like that's yeah that's kind of like how i feel yeah maybe like the duality of gemini is one of its strengths and like a beautiful thing about gemini's um whereas sometimes i think that can be like a Gemini stereotype that scares people, yeah. Yeah. you know, the idea that Gemini like might change their mind or have these um, That's how like we survive, you know? It's like being able right. to kind of change within our environments and and being, like, if we are in a different space, like, knowing how to adapt, knowing which energy to kind of like yeah. right. pull, yeah. up, pull towards and kind of like act upon, you know? Yeah. yeah, and then it's a true piece of Gemini, not something that they're like putting on or switching or changing. It's just like Gemini have all of that within them, and then they have the ability to pull on different um, different pieces of themselves when it's most suited, right? Yeah. It's like, I like how you Are you a, a May Gemini or June? May. Okay, that's fine. So sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, June Gemini's are just June Gemini's scary. don't have the as, e as easy a time of actually trusting their intuition. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's true. Cool. No, my dad's a June Gemini. Capricorn moon. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like literal. <laughs> <laughs> tries to compartmentalize. Well, there's 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 um. Yeah, there's the lovers and the devil right right there. Yeah, too. exactly. <laughs> literally. Like, yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. I'm yeah, gonna... let's pull these cards, you know, for our highest good with gratitude to all of you. <laughs> Didn't I just say I never get this one? What that kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I got a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like to use I know. It's right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is hard. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Keep going. Anyone else want to share what they got? Well, you know, it's funny because I was just saying a minute ago that I never got the fool, and then that's when I went cold. <laughs> so, you know, um, I'm not quite sure how to read this one right now, but it's a good thing. I mean, it's always the fool's never a bad card to get, but yeah, I agree. It just I can agree. go in so many different ways at this moment. So, yeah, so cool. very hopeful card. Yeah. yeah. Remember how I said how I keep pulling the same cards over and over again? Here's another one. Here's the, the one that keeps coming up, the seven of discs, or pentacles, huh. rather, uh, which in this deck is Saturn in Taurus, which is uh, heavy lessons in being uh, too bullheaded or not, you know, um, looking outside the periphery, or looking in the peripheries to see what else is there. But the word on the bottom of the card is failure. <laughs> no, it's fine. Cause <laughs> gonna, listen, I get this card so much that I am like an expert at it now. Um, it has everything to do with like the fear of failure, and specifically okay. in the material realm, and especially because I'm taking on all these new responsibilities as far as um, like I've t I told you about how all, all these numerology workshops coming up. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably going to be teaching one actually at move the movement lab eventually uh, I need to get like set up as far as like building a Kundalini Yoga community there first but I'm going to be teaching a workshop in New York and in Chicago and Denver and so it's this whole new possible career path for myself is opening up and the idea of it actually taking place the place of my main source of income mm -hmm. is terrifying and because mm -hmm. I love doing it and I don't want to fail at it and so it's like don't fail right. because you're thinking too much about it it's not right. really I think like yeah this is this card is not bad to me it's actually just reminding me like stop thinking so hard about it it'll be fine don't even go there <laughs> don't even congratulations go there. on that well, thank you very much I appreciate it awesomeness yeah it's it's been um been a culmination of a long and very um, slow moving process of, of getting to the place where I feel confident and comfortable enough to just do this and be okay with uh, trusting everything that comes out of my mouth when I'm teaching these workshops. Because <laughs> it's very easy to second guess yourself when it comes to any form of divination because it's like all right, well, what am I not saying that they're missing out on? What am I, you know, am I teaching this? And, and then accepting the monetary benefit of it, which is, uh, it's so weird when you love doing something, you're like, oh, I don't, how can I ask for money for Especially this? Especially when it's a spiritual Yeah, a spiritual work. Thing. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Like, so just being okay with that has been a, a challenge. Yeah. Uh, but I'm getting used to it. <laughs> yeah. It's worth getting over that hump. Yeah, because, oh, absolutely, absolutely. And the seven speaks to that in terms of like honoring the service that you do mm -hmm. and like feeling good about receiving payment for it. Yeah. Yeah, because you're doing the work, right? Yeah. You're doing the work. It just doesn't feel work, like so. work because yeah. right. it's like yeah. it's a passion, so it's not. It doesn't take the energy out of you that. A job does, right. you know, and so I feel energized after it, and I'm like, yeah. this shouldn't, you know, yeah. what right. is this? So it's it's definitely that newness that's hard to get used to or comfortable with at first, but I'll, I'll get there. I'm getting there. Yes. So that doesn't align with like our capitalist idea of no. what work should feel like. Yeah, right. So it feels it should weird suck and the wrong. life out of you. Yeah, so that's right. the weekend feels better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anybody else want to share what they got over there? I got um, the tower, which is a card I get constantly. Okay. And have <laughs> for in the last six months. It uh -huh. seems like. Um, it's been a rough year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of, well, I mean, on like a more positive side, I always kind of saw this like the end of a cycle. Or like the end of, of, of something breaking down that probably maybe it needs to break down. Like a... Um, I don't know. The first time I got it was uh, the day I got laid off my job last year. 
So, but it was something that I knew was kind of coming, but I just didn't know when, and then it happened. So whenever I pull it, I can't help but relate it to that. Yeah. And then I think about all the things that happened that day and how it went from the everyone at my job and my department loving each other and then the way it was, the news was dealt to us, all of a sudden it was every man for himself and it got really ugly. Um, everything's fine now with those relationships because time has passed, but it was just like, I always think of that. It's like, the, all of a sudden, everything was one way and now it's completely something else and never going to go back again. So that's kind of how I see it. But it, that's kind of a hard, when you're getting it all the time, I'm like, whoa, that's not happening all the time. So what does that mean? So I don't know. Always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. Because to get it, because I see the tower as being everything that you just described, but I also definitely see it as being an energy that is quicker mm -hmm. than some other cards and that right. can't be sustained for very long. So I'm kind of like, why are you getting that constantly? That sounds so rough. It. And I think because, you know, when, when bad things happen, you keep replaying them over over in your head. Mm. And maybe that's why you keep getting because you keep replaying the badness yeah, in your head. Well, I have a Scorpio moon, and I definitely have a hard time getting yeah, so you're cycling, maybe, and that's yeah. why it keeps coming up, because you're cycling. Mm -hmm. And it's reassuring to think, you know, that maybe it's like a, a nice little, you know, nine of nine of swords thing, that it's in your head, it's no, right. it's, there, that, it's here, it's not out there, it's all in here. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. That helps a lot. That's, really good. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. I, also yeah. I don't know if it's going to help you move past it, but at least know <laughs> yeah. that that's why it keeps coming up to you, is because you're, you emotionally are still replaying it for yourself. Right. That's probably very true. Wise. Thank you. <laughs> um, I uh, actually three cards jumped out at me, but they're all stones. They're all uh, pen stones or pentacles, right? I'd have to look at that deck again I'm to be certain, but yeah, that sounds that right. Sounds very it's a medicine woman tarot, so yeah, it's it's inspired by indigenous. Um, I've been getting the nine of pentacles pretty often, which is you know the the kind of I don't know, mature lady. I got Ace of Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles, and Two of Pentacles. So, uh, um, I don't even really. Maybe we could talk about like what the Pentacles actually mean in general. But Nine of Pentacles does um, speak to me because I am coming into my own in my career and. Um, my relationship. I just had a long talk with my friend about about maturity and about you know finding a place in my community, like finding space in the community to to react like a woman, even though I'm kind of surrounded with younger kids. Like I'm not going to react the same way, but I still want to have like space in certain you know um, community worlds. And uh, but yeah, that nine of pentacles, the nine of yeah, that makes sense. She's she used to scare me because it's kind of like she gets a little treated like a crone. Mm. Um, but I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I think she's more just kind of hella independent, and um, that's making sense to me. Carving, carving independence, and having conscious conversations about um, how to grow up in a youthful. Uh, community, you know, and not just in Baltimore, but just kind of in the arts and music um, world and trying to um, create a space and communicate um, as I as I evolve. That makes sense, you know. I love that. Those are great cards, I think. All of them? Good. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like also the Nine of Pentacles it it kind of allows you to like have fun. Like it's like you worked hard, exactly. you got all this money, like you can flex. Yeah, like, come to it. It. <laughs> just enjoy yourself. Yeah. 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 Yeah, like you're like, you're just like setting, yeah, yeah, setting a budget of your, you know, not just monetary, play. but also work-life balance. Um, yeah. You know, oh, allocating yeah. I mean, your emotional energy to, you know, appropriately. I mean, it's just it's about knowing what what Taking to pay. Care of your physical health. Yeah, the budget. Yeah. 
get her to work now. You find in the budget. You guys are awesome. Yes, I, all of that is happening. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes, that's really good. Right. I got the magician. Ooh. Ooh. I was also going to bring that up too, like how it kind of we were talking about uh, the temperance and justice. Justice. I was like the magician also kind of reminds me of like a lover's song. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure where that fits in. Like a master of anything right now. <laughs> Still pretty lost and kind of stabbing at the dark with pretty much everything I'm doing these days. But you got so, everything out on the table in front of you, though, right? Right. You have all your tools. Made some yeah. choice for it too. And I've been getting that a lot lately, and I feel like what it means. And I've had a lot of job interviews, mm -hmm. um, and not been feeling so great. Like I just want to stay home, and I don't want to have to face people. And so to me, sometimes it might be. Too Totally wrong, but sometimes that means like uh, faking it till you make it, or like putting your, a certain face on that you don't want to do, but it hel it helps. Like kind of have to sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It might be. You know, Which is a total trickster energy. Yeah, or like yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. like this magician, yeah. does it really matter? Like, card monster, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's like some very traditional agree, yeah. magician interpretation, but a way that like teaches you that um, your your thoughts and your beliefs actually have a really big influence on your reality. Yep. So if you can like trick yourself into believing something, that's fake until you make it. Yeah. Right? yeah like, totally. oh, I'm not depressed. Like I can do my life today. You know. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. Like it's, it's, the magician kind of helps you work that little magic, mm -hmm. and then in halfway through the day, you're like forgetting that. You didn't want to go outside or something. Right, exactly. Well, exactly. At least speaking from my personal experience here. <laughs> yeah. so. Like, who wants to go outside right now? Yeah. Well, you pulled it. <laughs> For real. Yeah. Yeah. It's too freaking hot. But he yeah. also, I mean, he's also unlimited potential. That's like his, it is a choice, but it's also like the realization there's everything in front of you. Mm -hmm. You just need to tap into it and, and use it in a way that works. Yeah, and I see the magician, I see all the cards, especially the majors, as a total journey, and the magician's definitely one, and we don't start out as the magician being that expert, you know? Yeah. So I feel like the mastery ideas of the magician, they really come towards the end of that journey, and the beginning is about learning to use those tools, mm -hmm. and it takes time, so I do definitely see the magician as having a big piece of it be learning, apprenticing, and like studying. So, so I want to feel bad if you're not feeling like an all-powerful magician because part of the magician's journey is, is that learning, mm -hmm. you know? And that's the beginning of it. Yeah. And you're lucky that like you're like at this time where you can probably discover and experiment and work with so many different things. And like, like you said, we have all these, you have all your sources in front of you and you have time to like pick and choose. Actually, not just like rush with it, but like actually stick yeah. with it for a little bit and then see what else develops. That's the problem is that I don't feel like I have the time. Mm -hmm. you know, I feel like I'm very, I have a job that is very time demanding and right. also doesn't pay well, so now I have to pick up a job on the weekend and then I don't really have time to explore my passions right now. Mm -hmm. I struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm also trying to figure out more things. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think it's also, like, the that, I was thinking about this the other day, too, is, like, the, the feeling that, like, we don't have time, but I, like, ugh, I feel like there's always, like, there are the moments that we're on our phone, the moments that we're on Facebook, like, that can, we can be using that time to just, or even just, even when you're at work and, like, you have, like, there are times to, to dip in your thoughts and some creative, creative moments that you might spark up throughout the day, you can just quickly jot, write them down, like. Yeah, or even, or even maybe this is the time for you to be knuckling down yeah. and, and working on other things. And, yeah. You know, because if we can't always be in that place where we have unlimited space for creativity. I mean, right. you know, there are times we just got to, you know, suck it up mm -hmm. and just, just, you know, it sucks, but we got to just, you know, plow through it and maybe, and when you come out the other side, you'll, you'll be stronger for it. Um, you know, this just maybe just embracing that right now everything just fucking sucks <laughs> and, you know, not trying to fight it and just kind of, you know, okay, right now it's going to be fine. I'm, I'm, I'm in the river of life right now. I'm in, 
you know, shit, but you know, gonna, it's going to flow, and I'll be, I'll be okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is not forever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but whenever we get these cards that, like, seem confusing or are coming up, and we're like, I don't feel that, but I want to, or I just don't get it, and it just keeps coming, I definitely think they're, like, trying to tell us something, so I would look into all these possibilities, and I would just maybe spend some time with the card if you want, like put it on your mantelpiece or beside your bed, like ch check it out every day. Like in that way you can call that card's energy like into your life, you know, mm -hmm. or you could be pulling that card and then being like this, I'm also talking to you William with the tower, just pulling another card from your deck and saying like, give me some clarity about how to use this energy yeah. or bring it into my life or what this card is trying to say to me because I want to know, but it doesn't make total sense, right? Or I'm not feeling it. So there's some ways to bring these energies into our life by like putting them up in our life and then also chatting with the cards. Because sometimes you pull a tarot card, it doesn't make perfect sense, yeah. and that's okay. Right. But you know, I hope that helps. Yeah. I got the the man upside down. Uh, oh, the hangman. Upside down. Uh, the hangman. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm not super sure how to read it, but um, yeah, I, I do notice that he's the you know six times two. So that, you know, there's kind of a maybe like a little echo of the lovers. So it's a uh, Conventional, or if that's a habitual like connection that people might make when thinking of this card, uh, I'm just making that connection because we were talking about that card. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, um, uh, sometimes I, I try to think of uh, things in the big picture, you know, like outside of myself, um, and it, it's kind of hard to do that. Um, but uh, yeah. Often, kind of make realizations that oh, like things are not like as they seem, you know. Um, and sometimes, uh, also, I'm not really sure where to go with this, but yeah, I guess I'm also trying to think of where, where I think I am in life, or where I think I want to be, and that you know maybe I'm, I, I don't know what I want, or the the thing I think I want is like something else and it might like, reveal itself to me um, at some point. But yeah, uh, looking at the him, you know, hanging upside down like this, he looks like he's standing up and like kind of dancing, um, but he's still like attached, you know, I guess is one foot attached still. So there's this kind of like constraint, uh, constraining um, element despite the appearance of like being free and dancing and stuff. Um, so I'm thinking Oh well, is that kind of me right now? Um, I don't know. I'm about to uh, start this really intense job for the next month, so maybe that's like well, it's something I don't want to do, but kind of constrained to doing it. And then after that, I can be free. Um, so yeah, we'll see. It's a summer camp um, thing, and it's five weeks long, you know, all all week, you know, eight to four. Or something. Uh, um, with like 2019, so you can probably be intense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Very, very soon, so, but I did last summer, it was also like really fun. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what it beats to. Maybe you know, I'll kind of find something on the other side of that that shows up. Um, then I had another thought about it. Oh, yeah, his um, I mean, I really like looking at the cards and really looking at what's happening. Uh, all the details, you know, and here the it's kind of like um, when you look at it normally, it looks like just a structure for him to hang on, but when you flip it, it kind of looks like trees, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's uh, maybe like that's where I want to be, and like I'm constrained by the by the rope, you know, my obligations. I really want to just like go hiking, which I didn't do last summer to do the same job, and I'm about to do again. Uh, so maybe I can go hiking. 
Yeah. You know, something like that. Um, and one last thing I, I like about this card is how he has his arms in his back. And like he just, there's like still always something he's hiding and you might not know what it is. Does he have a knife to like cut himself free? Would you or, hide a knife? Um, <laughs> I didn't you hide? Yeah, so I don't know. I, yeah, I, li I like the kind of like uh, hidden aspect in this car. Like, may he seems like helpless, but maybe he's totally in control and he's like fully us. I don't know what what's y'all's take on on this card. You know, I you know I heard like ooh yeah ooh, or, or like ooh. You know, like, <laughs> I, I, I like the hangman because you know I'm I'm a Libra, so you know decisions are always a hard thing for me. And um, when I get the hangman, it's like well it ain't up to me. You know it's you know it's it's beyond my control as they say. Right. And um, you know I would say if it was reversed, that would be that um, you know it's some some internal. Thing that you know, just flip a coin. <laughs> really, seriously, it's just you know, any any door you choose right now is going to be fine. Yeah, to me, um, he's got the sort of suspend the, the suspension of and very physically placing his heart above his head, so he's not like telling you to make a decision from a place of, of mental mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. observation or like process. It has to be kind of more from the heart and. Yeah. Because the congealed feeling that he has is sort of like, I'm stuck, what do I do? Yeah, like, but you have like the, his hands behind his back, or like, he's probably free, he's just there by his own making. Right. And so once he once he decides to free himself, he'll, he can. And also, as far as, like, similar to what you said, or kind of to counter it, actually, like, <laughs> it's not about being necessarily intuitive. Uh, he's like changed his perspective entirely. He's looking at the world yeah. in a very different way. So it actually right. says like, take some time, survey the situation, see what kind of things, what what the uh, like pre uh, thoughts you kind of have going into it already. Like how can you step back and reassess and and try and address it somehow, maybe differently, and maybe not. Maybe he'll flip right back up again afterwards. I'll just say that I love your interpretation of the cards in the end. I think the tarot really speaks to you, especially the tarot de Marseille. And whenever, um, I just really like getting to hear your interpretations of the cards because I think they're always really meaningful. I mean, that's why I like sharing in a group anyway because I like to hear other people's interpretations of the cards. But, um, but it's really fun to hear your interpretation. Because you're always like, well, I don't know, and I don't read tarot, but I'm going to say something that's so profound. Yeah. 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 Uh, what, like what, in, if you read the, the book or something, is there like a kind of thing that, or like certain themes that come up? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the stuff that you touched on that everyone else shared here, yeah. I would say like the keyword for me a lot is like sacrifice and then yeah. letting go. Yeah. Because the hangman is giving up um, the ability to take control of their own life. So they're giving in to fate. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I just see the sacrifice of it. So you're sacrificing your own control to just flow with what fate gives you. Sometimes the sacrifice comes in this way that can be a challenge or that can be painful. Sometimes you have to give up meaningful things about yourself. But it's one of it's maybe one of the most important cards in the tarot deck. It's very, very interesting and spiritual. It's walking between two worlds. Um, I thought it was interesting that you saw the connection to the lovers in terms of six times two because sometimes you'll see the tarot deck as this idea of um, the child because maybe they're about to be born and their head is pointed down yeah. into this like opening and into the earth. The birth canal, yeah, and they're mm -hmm. attached with this cord, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's this yeah. hanging yeah. In suspension. Just, yeah. Look at this, I just noticed something um, yeah. when it's reversed. Because when it's this way, it's like it's hanging like a weight, but when this way, it's like held like a balloon. Right. So it's like this, like you're being anchored. You're not, um, yeah, you know, this being, is like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like this is securing you to the yeah. earth as opposed to, yeah. you know, yeah. And you were actually holding it out it. to us yeah. to with the t top set or the reverse for the first part. You, 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 you right? put it reverse, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, there's, um, you're like, 
being buoyed up. Yeah, and the hair is the hair is and the hair is up. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and he's also straight, like, he's yeah. looking straight at you, which is interesting. yeah, yeah. So that's interesting. It's an interesting thing, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, that's really cool. Yeah, maybe the experience you're going to have is a very grounding one for you because there's like Aww. yes, you know, yes, yeah. this. Yeah. this in a sense of children and, and in that environment where they need guidance and, and you need to be present for them, it kind of prevents you from daydreaming about hiking too much. You have to be there for them, <laughs> right, you know. Right. I'll pull you um, back down to earth. And, and I'm teaching them clay, like, we're going to make pots and stuff. Like What's more grounding than pots? Yeah, it's very, like, uh, palpable for them. Yeah. Like, they, they get it really quickly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Cool. Yeah, thanks for all the input. It's really awesome. Okay, I got the last card, and I think it's fairly appropriate as the last card because it's the last card. Um, this is <laughs> Unity, which is the equivalent of the world, um, but this is the my terrestrial tarot deck, and I'll pass it around. It's kind of got this bulbous light quality. It's almost like a seed of light that's about to explode into a blossom or something. It's got a few other qualities to it. Um, it's almost like it's penetrating into the universe, but it's called unity. Um, and I guess the way that it's relating to me, and this is actually the second time I've gotten the world in, in about a month, um, and the other time was in an airport, which I thought was fairly appropriate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, I've been taking a lot of time for myself for the past year, um, spending a lot of time on my own, and getting to come out into the world, kind of, like, a, it's a rare, it's a, it only happens once in a blue moon, uh, so I'm just, uh, I see it as kind of returning, in a way, to being unified, uh, kind of, with, with people, uh, I know that's, like, maybe sounds a little insane, like, if I've been a total hermit, um, I haven't been a total hermit, but, uh, it's nice to just come out and, uh, and hear all of your thoughts, especially, and I really want to come back and take notes next time and uh, work with all this. Um, and I'm also uh, moving into a very big new phase of my life, lots of new jobs. Everybody's transition seems to be the name of the game these days. There's nothing stable. Nobody's saying I'm, you know, everything. Well, maybe somebody say that. You're, you seem very like you're having a lot of successes and really situated, at least your cards spoke toward, to yeah, that. The, the pinnacles are pretty earthy. I'm, I'm feeling really grounded, but um, the, the thing is, I I I tour for a living. I've been doing it for a long time. So my, I'm just... Not super so grounded. The cards are me just getting used to, like, not just letting them sway me, but my life is definitely cyclical and moving, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. yeah. So I'm also going to be very geographically mobile in the immediate future, and I'm leaving town actually in a month and a half, pretty much for good. So this is like my first and second to last time coming here probably, and I wish I'd found it sooner. I'm going to grad school in uh, Canada. Wow. Take you with you. British Columbia. It's the podunk town in British Columbia, but everybody should come up and go uh, skiing together. Yeah. Uh, so, I know not get hurt because they got universal health care. Yeah. <laughs> I, I tell people I'm not fleeing, but I'm kind of fleeing. <laughs> I'm an American refugee. Um, so, anyway, yeah, so this card and unity in the world very much is just like the world's kind of pooling at me. It's like get out of this little secluded place and uh, just, just yeah, get out there and be open. And, uh, it's like you literally and have it. the world. Yeah. Like, cool. And then you are also like the world. So it's like being able to play with those. Being able to recognize worlds. that within yourself and see wow. yourself out there as well. <laughs> I'm not even going to make a Facebook announcement. No, you're just going to be gone. Sneak. Yeah. Total ninja. Yeah. Away. <laughs> well, that's yeah. very cool. I mean, congratulations and like thank you for sharing that. What an appropriate and beautiful card to kind of send you off and mm. out. Yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you for hosting this. Oh, and thank you. Yeah, it's been really great. It's only worked so late. That's a good one.
I got the Eight of Wands. Ooh. Ah, the Arrows of Love. Yeah, pretty interesting. Exactly. So, like, Cupid's Arrows and also this creative spark. Um, uh, yeah, it's super, super interesting, and I like it. And... Um, I feel like it's a lot of good vibes for me to like, I have a physical to do list that at this point involves all creative projects and things that I have that I want to be working on creatively. Cause I got, I did all the like boring or real life stuff. So now I really see this as being like, okay, so you have to be crossing those things off your list and like doing the creative work, you know, what needs to be done, like get motivated and like put some put some work in and do a little bit every day. Um, so I feel like I did good work today in that realm. And I just think that this energy just wants me to like keep going with it. So I feel good about it, grateful for it. How was your retreat? My retreat was amazing. It was very, very challenging. Um, but it was also very um, worth doing. I did Vipassana and got back on June 18th, so, um, and I had so many creative ideas, and that's when I got out, I wrote, had to write down this to-do list, you can't write while you're in there, but I had all of these creative ideas, including the tarot club zine, and, like, everything else, so I, that's, that's the to-do list, the post-Vipassana to-do list that I'm, like, working at all the ideas I had in there, yeah. My ulterior motive is to try to take you to tea so you can tell me about it later. Uh, mm -hmm. you can tell me you can do it later. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> what you got, Linda? Oh, do you want to share? Yeah, yeah, I got the school. Oh, yeah, you oh, did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. we talked about everybody. Yeah. 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 Foolish of me. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll just stop the broadcast now, and I want to say thanks to everyone for doing this with me because I had a lot of fun, and I feel like it was flipping amazing. Yeah. Do you guys want to say bye? Bye. bye. bye.